I'm delighted to say we're joined by Bruff Scott to do exactly that. Bruff, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. It's great to be discussing this, isn't it? I guess really thrilling. Two days away it is from a possibility that the greatest thing that's ever trod on the turf is going to be seen for the last time. It's a possibility. I actually don't believe you can say he's the greatest, but let's let Steve try and put it. <laughs> <laughs> That's down to you, isn't it, to put the, put the case for? It is. I mean, there are many choices. Um, I'll explain my reasons, and uh, I think he's uh, he's certainly up there with them. And I think there's a certain couple of areas where he's uh, probably got more claims than most. And of course, we've got the the big matchup at, at the weekend: Sirius Desaigrebrough and also Nathaniel on ground that might favour both of them more than Frank or heavy ground. Now reported at Ascot. Yes, I mean, I think the most exciting thing is, I mean, I don't believe he's put up a performance yet to match Dancing Bray's Ark or Nijinsky's uh, King George. Quite apart from anything else, he wasn't up to running a mile and a half as a three-year-old. I mean, he wasn't up mentally to doing that. Mm -hmm. So forget about whether he could, he didn't. So I think he's done that. But if on Saturday we have really heavy ground, if Sirius Disney beats Nathaniel six lengths for second and he beats Nathaniel six lengths, well then, you know, I'm not sure I won't start agreeing with Steve. <laughs> yeah, funny, the ground, I think, is something that not, it's not to do with tonight. Thing. I don't think you can underestimate that. Again, we're going to talk about a couple of horses that will be mentioned a number of times now, two of the greats of certainly in my lifetime. Briggs Gerard encountered heavy ground twice in his career. He won by a, sh by a head, I beg your pardon, in St James's Palace Stakes and a short head in the Champions Stakes. He coped with it like a great horse does. He was not at his best. Dancing Brave was actively kept away. They were going to pull him out of the mm. arc. I was talking to Guy Harwood recently. Had they had rain during the week. So it's a big arc. It's, it's an arc you, you shouldn't underestimate. It can bring horses together. Heavy ground can bring horses together. So it might be that he's great on it, but we don't know he's never been tried. I mean, he actually always, I've always thought he might even be better on softer ground because he, you know, he doesn't give spare himself this horse. He really hits the ground. Mm -hmm. He really goes for it. And when he, did, he won pretty easily on the soft. But you don't know until you get the heavy. And look exactly. what happened to the arc. Mm. And what you exactly. do know is they're going to be very tired at the end. Mm -hmm. We don't know he really, he seems to get mile of the quarter perfectly easily, bullet train mile, mile and a half. You don't know. And he may not do it. He's got to do it, but he may not do it. Yeah, no. it could. It probably is going to be, given the conditions, his biggest test yet on, on Saturday on British Champions Day. Let's get the debate underway, though. We want you to join the debate. You can email us on studio at racinguk.com. We've already got several excellent emails from you. You can also tweet us at racinguk. Dot com. That's so racing UK underscore you racing underscore UK. That's the way to uh, to tweet us to get in touch. Let's start the debate now, though. And uh, Steve, first of all, you're going to make the pro Frankel case. Yeah, in a very stiff way, referring to notes. I'm not a naturalist, but I'm just going to going back to my own experience. I what got me into racing, into flat racing, was watching Nijinsky win the 1970 Triple Crown. It absolutely fired my imagination. From then onwards, I think there'd been several great horses. I think we'd all agree. Nijinsky himself, Brigadier Gerard, Mill Reef, Shergard, Dancing Brave, See the Sars, Frank. I don't think anyone would argue with any of them. They were all outstanding. We're here to try and you know, put up the case for which is the greatest. I think on their very best form, Nijinsky's King George, Brigadier Gerard's Guineas, Mill Reef's Ganet, Shergar's Derby, Dancing Braves Art, Frankel's Queen Anne. I wouldn't want to put them in an order. I think they were all magnificent performances, absolutely outstanding. Where I'd argue for Frankel, for sheer, consistent, brilliant performances, I don't think there's been any horse to compare with him, one after another. The Guineas, both his Sussex Stakes, the QE2, the Lockings, the Queen Anne, the Jub, Mon the Jub Monty were all truly stunning, outstanding performances. The things that have been put up against him, the, the, the stick he's beaten with, or well, the main sticks are two. One, people say he hasn't beaten anything. I really can't agree with that. He's beaten 20 individual Group 1 winners in his career. That matches up with any of the horses that we're talking about. And the other one is, and the main one, is not as versatile as some. Brigadier Gerard won at a mile and a half. Dancing Brave won at a mile and a half. Nijinsky won a triple crown. Now, that's true. But I think you need to analyse it. It's easy to wear sort of rose-tinted glasses, I think, when you look back at things, you know, in the old days. I mean, Pele never missed a chance at football and Muhammad Ali, you know, was, was absolutely invincible. Mike Yarwood was even a funny comedian. You look back. <laughs> but I, I think if you actually analyse a couple of their performances, Brigadier Gerald had one go at a mile and a half. He won. And we, we hear Harry Herbert uh, uh, you know, talking about what a stunning memory it was when he was a kid. And it was a fantastic, they tried the race and he won. But he beat a horse called Parnell a length and a half and there was a steward's inquiry because he hampered him. There is no way that was anything like up to Brigadier Gerard's best performance. Nowhere near. He was an outstanding miler, 10 furlong horse, just like Frankel. That's what his greatness depends on. 
Nijinsky, he did win a triple crown. I would argue that he performed in the ledger in terms of pure form with nothing special. Well, one or two of his wins were style over substance. I mean, he was a magnificent horse, but again, I think from a form perspective, you can, I'd have my doubts. The one I would accept in terms of versatility is Dancing Brave, who was truly outstanding at a mile win the Guineas. He beat, he thrashed Triptych in the Eclipse. He won a magnificent art, one of the great races of modern times. In my lifetime, he's probably the most versatile, but he can't compare with the sheer volume of great performances of Frankel. So, I mean, sort of summing up, I'm, I'm, even I, I'm, I'm not old enough to properly remember Rebo and Seabird. They may have been, but I don't remember. In 40 years that I've followed the sport, I can't think of another horse who matches Frankel for sheer, consistent brilliance. And for that reason, uh, I put him above the rest. So you're talking about the consistent manner and dominance of his performance and you feel that the, the number of times that he's put up a performance like that and the quality of horses that he's beaten make him... For me it would. I wouldn't argue that you know, so many of these great these are all these are the horses who've, who've made racing for me. You know, they are, every one of them, I would argue, to the end of the earth, how great they were. And on their best performances, I couldn't say. I think it's. I know we're going. You know, we're going to hear one four ones and one four. But the, basically, they are fan, They are the creme de la creme of horse racing. Who, who've reached an area which most horses never reach. All of them. And on their day, they were brilliant. What is just amazing about Frankel, and even if you don't think he's the best, you really, I think, should acknowledge. It's just the sheer number, barring barring the St James's Palace Stakes, where there were reasons for every run he's had since a three-year-old. I'm ignoring his two-year-old career. Every single run from three-year-old onwards has been brilliant. Every single one. He's never remotely looked like getting beaten in any of them. I can't. You know, I, I love the other horses, but I can't remember any of them. You know, they all had areas of vulnerability. At the moment, he hasn't shown it. And uh, so, whether he's better or whether he's not, I don't know. But I think the the consistent brilliance, I would argue. Is a, is a virtue worth sticking up for. And the mile and a half factor? I wish he tried. I mean, I do think it's great. I, said, I don't think Brigadier Job is his best, but he still did it. I mean, he definitely did it. Dancing Brave, See the Stars, they were magnificent at a mile and a half. You know, no doubt. I wish he had. I mean, that would be that would be perfect. But, you know, he did, uh, he did do the mile and a quarter. He put up a performance as good as he's put up over any distance there. It's a shame. I agree. It's a shame. But, uh, so the versatility argument, I say I would favour Dancing Brave. I personally, I think for, you know, for, for top level performances at different distances, I think he's got the edge over all the horses I've mentioned. But, you know, he had his vulnerable moments, he had his less impressive performances, and he didn't do it as often as Franco has done it. And not racing beyond English borders? Well, that could be not a British Gerard. Um, Nijinsky did because he came from Ireland. I, uh, it doesn't bother me particularly. Um, I mean, it would have been nice again. The Ark is being one of the sort of the, yeah, obviously one, a key middle distance race in the world and certainly in Europe. And it would have been nice maybe to have a go at that. But you know, Shergar never went over there. Um, yeah, he's not. He's not alone in that. I, it, it bothers me little, really. I, he's, you know, he's uh, luckily he's, he's taken on the top French horse in his own backyard this week. Okay. So, if you've heard. Steve's arguments. Now, how would you, in the pantheon of greatness in horse racing, order the very best horses that we've ever seen in history? Well, uh, this I would accept. I think this is the most consistently, extravagantly brilliant horse I've ever seen. Because he doesn't just win a length and a half, uh, it's quite a good phrase, style of a substance or something. When, when Leicester was involved, you know, he'd be sort of sweeping by, you never knew how much was in. There's no question of how much this horse has got in the tank. He just gives you everything and he wins by however many billions of lengths it is. I mean, the, the, the accumulation of lengths now is enormous. Mm -hmm. But I think it is, the thing is, that, of course, this is a George Best versus Lionel Messi discussion. Uh, and actually, the thoroughbred is getting fitter and faster. If only we had some of the pictures we're seeing here, if only we had the Kipco timing. I mean, it is very revealing that when they did the, the uh, um, Queen Anne, he ran a 10.58 six furlong. 10.58. You know, it was a faster individual furlong than anything in the King stand. You know, that's... That, that's technical proof, which is really nice to have. And horses are basically going quicker. I mean, Mill Reef won the... He broke the record in the arc at, I think, 2.26 or something. I and mean, the arc record there is 2.23. It's, it's, they are getting quicker, but versatility is part of the deal. The test of the thoroughbred racehorse, the racehorse, the greatest flat horse, the test for that has always been, historically, the measurement of a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. And he's, he chose the three-year-old to only measure himself Oh, he chose, they chose, and they probably did the right thing because he was very, it, it, they've done unbelievably well, Henry Cecil and his team. The horse was really pretty close to the edge as it, early before he ran as a two-year-old, 
and you know they've settled him they brought him on you know after he ran in the the 2000 guineas remember a lot of people remember richard who shaky says he ride a horse like that he'll never ever last and he, and he doesn't spare himself on the gallops horse either he go goes for it but they didn't run him over a mile and a quarter or even a mile and a half as a two year old as a three year old mill reef won the won the won the, the commentary stakes by six lengths mm -hmm. the gym crap by 12. uh he got beat by over a mile he broke he beat the best french horse Cara in record time in the in the eclipse he won the king george by a mile and a half by six and the arc in record time i mean as a three-year-old there's no question this horse did not measure up to what they did but he's got his four-year-old now and, he, and he's getting better and I, what i hope is he'll be really tested on saturday uh, and because this horse serious as age looks seven pounds better uh, and he broke the track record last year a mile and a quarter on the firm mm -hmm. he looks seven pounds better on the soft and the heavy ground. He won nine lengths last week. Yeah. He won the Ganny by about ten lengths or eight lengths. And last year he won two races at Doval in really heavy. He's a, he's a really, really big machine in the soft. And, you know, say he runs se seven pounds better than he normally does on the soft, and this horse goes only seven pounds less. As you say, pretty much ever I saw I was there for the clips, uh, and he was really struggled to beat Gold Rod. Mm. I mean, the idea of this, one of the great nonsenses is horses, good horses, go on all ground. No, they don't. They don't go as well anyway. It's complete cobblers. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Brady did not go as well on the soft as he did on the firm. But he was a mighty, mighty horse. And again, beating Brigadier Gerard and My Swallow, who were two really outstanding horses and well proven in the Guineas, categorically, I think that's a better performance than, I know it's very exciting to look at, than, than Frankel did. So to be the greatest, which is why I'm opposing you, you've got to say, not that he was as good as, but he was greater than. Mm -hmm. I submit you cannot say he was greater than. I don't think you can say Lionel Messi was greater than George Best. OK, you can't do it the other way around, but I don't have to prove that the others are better than him. You have to prove he's better than him. So you're levelling a lack of versatility that he, he's, he hasn't proven as much versatility as, say, yeah, I mean, Mill Reef or Brigadier Gerard, yeah. a, a sort of lack of adventure in his campaign for reasons that you've just outlined? Yes, I'm saying that the horses mend... The test, is, is the test for a thoroughbred is about physical constitution, because the thoroughbred is a very... You know, it's a young athlete, and about its mental strength. Mm -hmm. And they took the decision, and I'm sure quite rightly, that to risk him the derby, I mean, it would have been the horse of, um, what was the horse that, that, that uh, Jason Weaver rode, went a million miles clear? Mr. Bailey's. Mr. Bailey's. Mr. Bailey's, the fellow. It might have been Mr. Bailey's plus. I mean, he would have been a lot further ahead than Mr. Bailey's. I mean, when he came around the turn, he'd be, I mean, they'd be just coming up Tatlam Hill. But he might have fallen into an almighty hole at the end. And it would have been absolutely ruinous. So I'm sure they did the right thing. And as you know, Epsom can ride quite firm, quite quickly. And all that sort of thing, and they probably and they surely did the right thing. They had to pull him out of the arc, really. I think you'd probably a first time of a mile and a half in bottomless ground. You'd probably have had to pull him out, which would have been the most appalling anticlimax. Mm. Do you think they might be viewed differently? I was talking to, to Jamie Lynch on the phone of Time Form earlier today. Had they entered for the arc and then withdrawn him when he was heavy, do you think that would almost have? Oh, that means people would silence get. things because people have said, "Oh, they were going to try it," and then then it. Then oh no, I think they pulled him out. I think I think then you've got because you just get you know basically uh, you get a start of the of the drunken punter syndrome. You're going to have a, what, you're, you're windy. You're pulling out. I mean, you're going, it's a, uh, I mean, all fair ran. You know, uh, he, he after all the soft ground in. Um, I was I was at the Japan Cup one year when a thing of the um, Guy Harwood's ran, and it, they, it was officially soft ground. They ran two twenty eight mile and a half. I mean, that's a track record, a lot of English tracks. Do you want to... Do yeah, want my, to my, 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 I, I, the versatility argument, I say, is, a, is, is the one which is, I think, invulnerable. But what, I, I, all I think that when that's talked about, it should be analysed what horses actually did. In terms of, is easy... I'm not saying bluff to but I've seen loads of articles and loads of things said, like, said, you know, like um, you know, he was proven at a mile and a half, or he did it at three different... Well, I would argue that See the Stars Guineas form is not outstanding. He was a great horse, but his, his form is at two, 10 furlongs and a mile and a half. Beating Delegator, whatever, is, is not outstanding form. I would argue Brigadier Gerard's mile and a half form is not outstanding. You know, it's, it's beating Parnell a length and a half is not in comparison well, we with other horses. Argue, it's, it's absolute fact. I mean, that, that's the point. So, he really struggled to do it, probably should have been disqualified. 
Yeah, 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 so yeah. the only truly versatile horse of the ones we mentioned, it is he was, great. but he's again the ledger, best one in the world, he's just dominated. But that was six. Like, I mean, we're, it not, was. we're not doing no one else. I mean, no one's suggesting poor old Frankel should have been running the ledger, are they? No, no, no. Uh, but I, I think Dancy Boat was truly a great uh, in, in terms of versatility. It's the number. None of the horses we mentioned can match him in. You know, this will be backed up by the official handicap, but time for one thirty-five, one forty, one forty, one forty. 140, 140. That's unheard of. In racing, any of those horses, they didn't do it. You know, it might have been the ground, but Brigadier Zero did struggle in, in soft ground. Milby did get beat in a Guinness, and my swallow, who was just behind him, got beat next time out as well. I think, you know, this. It, all I'm saying is that I'm not anti at all the other horses. I think some of the sticks that are used to beat um, Frankel with aren't entirely fair. They don't use the same. Um, um, strictness of comparison, you know, when reflecting on other horses. That's all. And I just think in it, the bit that blows me away is how how consistently great he is. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Dominic Gardner Hill. It's a wonderful coincidence. He very kindly gave me a lift back from Ascot the day of the Queen Anne. And of course, time form and got them coming on. I thought a little bit opportunistically, you know, announced mm -hmm. to the press that night, this is the best performance we've ever rated. And Dominic, in his quiet way, said to me, "Well." I, I'm still not sure I can actually say that that was a better performance than Dancing Brave's Ark. Mm. And he didn't, you know, he didn't say anything, but he doesn't have a great man to say publicly, maybe you can tempt it out of him. <coughs> well, we're, we're going to hear uh, from, him, from him later on. But, and, and funnily enough, he does mention Dancing Brave's Ark as the touchstone. Let's have a look at that Dancing Brave's Ark, shall we, and just in, enjoy it once more. Just because, Bruff, I mean, the, the, the point that is made about this race is that it is one of the greatest fields ever assembled. Yes, it was, therefore it's, it's completely competitive, lots of horses commit, uh, and uh, look where he is. It's right <laughs> Out of shot. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies for this, this is the, be the best we can do with, with the footage that we have. A Dancing Brave has to pass the entire field here. I mean, these were good horses, Akatanango, Sharistani, uh, uh, Triptyke was there, Sharistani's coming on the outside here, and this is Bering, who they have thought was the best horse in France for ages, and here he comes, look, and he, he devours them all. He wins absolutely going away. But, I mean, you know, he doesn't win ten lengths, but these are all proper, proper Group 1 horses. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Uh, and it's a mile and a half, so it is... It is would he, he wouldn't have done that, in my view, mile and a half. I don't think he'd have done that. But then, you know, would Dancing Brave have won the uh, guineas? I don't know. I mean, it might have done, but hard to be... But certainly, uh, Dancing Brave has pulled himself up a bit, so it's, mm -hmm. quite, it's, it's a bit hard to know. Funnily enough, Dancing Brave wasn't a particularly exciting looking individual, really. He, he had parrot mouth and he, he wasn't an amazing looking horse. This horse isn't. This horse, the people who say the monster, you know, they're big, you know, 16 1 only. Not as big as Shelly the Stars, not as handsome as Shelly the Stars. But he's a fantastic mover, fantastic sort yeah. of predatory walk. It's, when he, it's also when he gets into motion with that bound, when he finds his stride in a race, which is extraordinary. I and think. I don't know if you've done some measurements, but I've seen it. I don't know where they get it from, but they claim that his stride is 24 feet. I know, talking to um, Shane Feathersonhall, he says that when you're riding at home, you know, normally if you're coming up the canter, you, you have a natural place you put a horse behind the one in front so it doesn't touch, so you're just there behind. But with him, you have to get another half length further back because he reaches out so far. Mm -hmm. If you're not too careful, you're in the same body position as you normally are, and you're clipping the horse in front. Mm -hmm. 